one. Okay. Hey everyone. Hey, everyone. Hi. And would you like to start us off with introductions? Hi everybody. I'm Sister Margaret Downey. I've lived here in Columbus for about ten years, and um, I'm I've been in religious life since 1966. So. When we say we're a multi-generational house, we're really a multi-generational <laughs> house. I'm Sister Pat Thompson. Hi, everybody. It's nice to be with you. Um, I have been, I entered the community religious life in 1960. As a 15-year-old, I was in um, an early um, aspirancy program where high school students could finish school and live at the convent. So I have a I have lived most of my life in the convent, um, and it has been a wonderful journey and a very uh, securitous journey. But anyway, uh, <laughs> so I've been along around for a while. <laughs> um, I'm Sister Kelly Williams, and I entered in 2014. And I have to say, I'm always astounded by people who know like what year they entered because <laughs> I knew that I would have to memorize it. So I put it in all of my passwords as a 14 just so that I would always remember um, that specific number. And I moved here to Columbus um, in October um, and moved in the midst of the pandemic. So made for a very exciting adventure that I don't necessarily recommend. However, um, moving here has been a delight and it's been such a joy to be with both of you and um, get to experience living in community with you. Oh, and I have to say, in the middle of a pandemic, having somebody join this community has been most interesting. <laughs> and, and it's really been wonderful, hasn't yeah, it? Just yes. to be able to lots of lots of adjustment on all our parts, I guess. Right, but right. but that's what community is. It's but it it's, also gave us more time together when you think about it, because mm -hmm. normally we would have been out and about. But we didn't get to do as much going out and about. Right. And so we got to get to know each other pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> Which is definitely good. Um, it's so what because I got here in October, I um when the pandemic started, I was still teaching um in Mississippi and like we we were in the middle of school and I remember like our principal said, like, all right, it's Friday afternoon, there's a chance we may not come back on Monday get prepared for all the digital stuff and and we'll all do the best that we can and like that was, that was it amazing. you know um what was the beginning of i mean we're on a year of living into this pandemic um what was the beginning of it like for both of you well for me particularly uh, a lot of i would volunteer at the county jail the city jail and that shut down very quickly right so that meant the end of that program um, I was working at our outreach program and still was able to do that somewhat. Um, but as it went on, we had to we had to even pull back from that for a while. Mm -hmm. um, I worked at a pregnancy resource center. We had to pull back from that to a certain degree. Right. Um, so it meant really, um, and we used to have a number of different groups here in our own home for spiritual direction, for spiritual spirituality programs, mm -hmm. we pulled back from that. So it meant there was a lot of time for a prayer and for reading mm -hmm. and for being together. Yeah. What yep, up close and personal. <laughs> <laughs> I remember very clearly March 17th of last year. Right. Because it was the day that we gave a retreat for a confirmation group at one of the local parishes mm -hmm. and i was having this conversation with the the dre about whether we should call that off or not and i remember saying to her you know i don't see that this is that serious yeah. i think i think we can have 10 kids together and now i look back on that and say the next day i knew it was serious, serious. yeah um, but difference. But that was that was certainly the line of demarcation for me. I I knew that day that was that was the end of that kind of outside ministry. Yeah. yeah. I, now I work from home. Most of my work is communication here from home. So my my world didn't stop as dramatically as Pat's did mm -hmm. or as Kelly's did. I mean, she you continued to teach 
I well, I did, but it was a oh, it was a ball game because we were online, um, and our school. I, I loved the choice that they made. We weren't. Um, I'm never going to get the word right. It's not asynchronous because that we had big Catholic families. And if you have four kids who are in like elementary school and high school, and you have one family computer because everyone's been on their phone, you can't have everybody do all the things at the same time. So they were allowing the high school kids, like you had, it opened up at 8 a.m., you had all your assignments, and by midnight you have to turn it in. And that was the day. And so it was me recording videos mm. in and around our house. I was like giving them a tour of the convent. <laughs> like every day I'd be like, here I am in the kitchen. This is what I need you to do for your homework. Um, and then also like pulling in sisters from the house to like, I we did like, I would do like, this is our assignment video. And then we did a prayer video. And so sometimes it was just me. Um, I had this really good reflection book by um, Katie Prejean. Oh. Um, it's a lovely Lenten book for teenagers and it was phenomenal. And so they had challenges and tasks and prayers to do from that. Um, and then I would sometimes snag a sister and be like, will you be in my prayer video? And they were like, absolutely. So they would do like the reading for it. And it was, it was lovely. Um, but it was, it was wildly different because I was so used to like being there, here, there and everywhere. And, and we weren't, but I think there, you know, even within it, there was so much like people seeking the joy and the beauty and like in and amongst this like terrifying experience. Um, and one of the, the neatest things for me is in the house that I was in, like, we all went to different parishes. So often like we didn't, you know, like we were part active parts of all these different parishes. And so when we were all home, we were like, well, let's, you know, let's do mass together now. And so we got to like watch it and we would pick different places. And someone was like, oh, I know this free season, this like, like two states over, like, and we'd watch it together and, and have that experience of like um, Sunday worship together, um, mm -hmm. which was a cool um, gift for me for that. What, did, were there any like <laughs> ways of finding beauty in it that you encountered? I, I found that finding ways to maintain relationships, to maintain communication mm -hmm. was where the beauty was. Yeah. Um, there, and there were lots of them, but they were kind of hard to find. Mm -hmm. and, and in the beginning, I just thought, well, this is two weeks. And yeah, this is maybe this will be a right. month. It was a while before I really concluded that we were in for the long haul. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a big shift for sure. And Zoom got to be a whole lot easier um, in the beginning. <laughs> Zoom was not really our favorite way of trying to relate or communicate or right. be together or yeah. anything. But as time has gone on, I think we've all gotten a whole lot better at Zoom. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm afraid Zoom may be here to stay <laughs> to some degree in terms of we won't be traveling. We've learned we don't always have to travel. Yeah. Yeah. Although the traveling was fun. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say that the Zoom has been a really, there's been some really amazing experiences of because of Zoom that I know I wouldn't have had. My cousin got married this summer and, um, you know, this summer was going to, was supposed to be a very busy summer for me. Yes. <laughs> um, that the, this past summer was. And um, when it wasn't, um, I knew that I wasn't going to be able to make it to her wedding in real life. Um, but because it was Zoomed, all of my siblings got to be there for it and be a part of it. Um, we've had a number of sisters who have renewed their vows and we've had like zoom experiences of that. Mm -hmm. um, and Marissa's first vows, that was a, a very cool experience yes. to kind of right. share into that. And, and I found it's been nice. I mean, like I know that the newer members because I am one, you know, but not everyone does. So it's been really cool to like in the communities I've lived in to be like, this is this person who I talk about all the time and like, this is their celebration and we all get to be a part of it in a way that if, you know, if I had gotten to go for it, you know, would you have gone, you know, that's right. Right. You know, so that's mm -hmm. part of a wonderful gift, I think. And of course the gift you shared with us is that you know, all these people who 
who are at the moments in their lives when they're they're celebrating a very important moment. Yeah. And we get to be part of that. And we aren't normally able to all travel. Exactly. Yeah. We have a question, folks. All right. All right. What is the best part of being in a multi-generational community? Ponder, ponder. <laughs> I I think it's the sharing of gifts. Mm -hmm. I yeah. I find, you know, Kelly has wonderful gifts that she can share and shares very generously. And I hope she finds the same oh, absolutely thing to share. <laughs> and thank God she knows the technology. Yeah. Uh, she, that is a wonderful gift to all of us to be able to know that when something doesn't work, Kelly. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the the gift, I mean, it is shared gift on across the board, like the shared wisdom um, is just, it's, trying to like navigate your way through religious life when there isn't, you know, like a very clear, like road work of how do you live this and, and recognizing that everyone has their own like unique twist to it right. um, and being able to like find out how you make it work in your world. Um, that's, it's so helpful for me to, to kind of take it all in and, and encounter it. Plus I just, you know, like I always like sharing in community. I like to be, to be with people and and learn your stories and um, leave your stories with mine. Mm -hmm. We're very popular. And we've had we've had some wonderful conversations about things we wouldn't have had conversations right. about. Right. Yeah. Because Pat and I have known each other for you know, twenty five years, <laughs> but you know Kelly now brings a new a new voice and a new perspective to it. No. Okay, we've got another question. We do. Um, so how did newer members stick together through the past year? Were there texting chains or more video chats? Yes, yes, yes. Um, <laughs> I, I think, and it's it's cool too, because there's like, I'm part of like Mercy text groups and then like Giving Voice, which um, is a group of us who are like newer, or I think it's under 40 um, across the board of like religious communities. Anyone who's under 40 can be part of it. Um, and I might be wrong about that number. It could go higher than that. And I might be wrong. Um, but it's been really cool. So I have like groups of like sisters from different communities. And then, um, one of the sisters on Sunday nights, like it's, that's been like Sundays are for me. Like I, I've often in my own life, I'm like, how do you really make it like a day of Sabbath? And I've struggled with that. Um, and I've been so grateful here. Like we have Sunday afternoon prayer of like contemplative prayer. And then after that, um, I have a, a standing Sunday phone call, Zoom call of several of us who, um, it's newer mercies who are together and we have it like self-care Sunday. And it's, if you're doing crafts or you need to catch up on something, or you just wanna like chit chat or gripe or whatever you need to be um, and just be together. And like, I've, I've grown so much closer during this time because we're all trying to navigate it that I think um, I, I didn't see that one coming of how much closer you could get to people. And it's the intentionality behind it. And because you know that you're not gonna get to see them, you have to go the extra mile for that for sure. Plus I think I bought a lot of stamps recently yeah. and I'm pretty good right. about like getting on my letter writing. <laughs> okay. We're pausing on questions, so if there's okay. something that's sparking in your heart, you're always welcome to share. <laughs> okay. Um, so you were mentioning outreach earlier, and I know both of you are involved in that. What is that? Well, it's our parish ministry for the underserved and the poor of of our total community of the of the Columbus area. So since the pandemic began, we were one of the places that you saw on TV with people just lining up, to, mm -hmm. cars just lining up to go through because, because so many people were food insecure. Right. And so our outreach was one of the big places that that stayed open through the entire thing. And I'm really proud of that. Yeah. We weren't allowed to, to even go for a while. So it was it was younger folks who went in and started to be the volunteers at our outreach. And now 
you know, those of us who are a little older are able to go back and 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 take over again. But the the that time when there was huge need and people were not getting the, the financial backing that they needed to, to keep food on their tables, that the, our St. Anne's outreach was able to provide day in and day out for, you know, hundreds of people. Um, now we're back to the normal program of outreach, and that is some food um, provision for families, and they come in by appointment now to to pick up food, mm -hmm. and then some assistance with utilities and some assistance with rent. Okay. Is it? And this is a big anniversary year for the outreach that's program, right. right? It's is it 40, 30, 30. Oh yeah, that's right. Forty, 40 years. This is the fortieth year. Yeah, it's very cool. And have you both been involved in that since you moved? Here since we yes, and the sisters of mercy have been involved in it for the entire 40 years. Oh, okay. Actually, it started in our convent. Really? Which is then you may not even know I that. do not know that. <laughs> Learn something new every day. <laughs> what is now the rectory was uh -huh. our convent. Right. That I and know. and there is a large room there, and that that room, which is now the boardroom, okay, is was the first outreach. Oh. And so they you know, it was a much smaller right. undertaking. Now yeah. it's a pretty organized and yeah. extensive. It's a massive building. It is. Which is awesome. That's phenomenal. Yeah. I did not know. That's so yeah. cool. Um, folks at home, if you'd like to ask us any questions, you are welcome to in the little chat. Um, and we're thankful for the folks who have been. Um, and I'm so grateful for both of you for just being willing to just sign on for this. And we had like the best technical difficulties you could have beforehand, which my computer decided it didn't want to play at all. And the beauty of community was that yeah. someone else had a computer that we could make work. And then we did. And it's wonderful. <laughs> um, and I think that's. I think it's so ironic that it's your computer. Of course it's mine that doesn't work. <laughs> She's our computer guru. I know. It's been good. I think um, that's been one of the things that I think was, was cool about um, when I did move here. Like, we had really good conversations about, like, how do we want to share community together and how, like, what do we want to add? And, like, we have Friday night movie nights. Um, mm -hmm. And that's been a really cool experience um, because we've had, like, light movies and pretty heavy movies. But um, we've had some really good conversations that have, like, stirred from that that's been really awesome. Um, and, and those conversations have gone on through the week. I think that's the yeah, wonderful thing. Yeah. You know, it isn't all what happens on a Friday night. You know, right. That's you kind of, like, sit with it and stir with it and bring it back up of, like, do you remember that thing? <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Um, what has been... You can you can think in the last ten years. You can think whenever you like. What's been one of your favorite um, ministry opportunities that you've had during your religious life, or some, however you want to answer? It. <laughs> well, I guess one of my very favorite things that I've done is that I was the director of a literacy center when I was when I was early in in my time in in baltimore okay um it was it was a it was the time when there was a lot of concentration nationally mm -hmm. on on literacy right and we started a little little bit of a hole in the wall on baltimore street and it baltimore street was the line of the line between the two ethnic groups, mm -hmm. the white and the black communities in, in Baltimore. And so the fact that it was on Baltimore Street yeah. meant that it was okay mm -hmm. for for everybody to come. Right. It was it was a really wonderful time to be in, in ministry in that particular education type of ministry. Mm -hmm. I really I really did enjoy it. Yeah. Sounds awesome. You? you know, I when I think of it, I have a hard time figuring out my, a really special one because everything I've done has always been special at the time. Mm -hmm. But I think the one that really um, challenged me and I grew the most and continue to think back to um, was when I was in Atlanta, I started a ministry called Circle of Friends. 
And so I walked with the homeless, but that particular group, I realized that they needed, we didn't have anything in place for people who got into housing, got into apartments or got someplace. And they, sometimes I remember one woman who said to me, I'm going to go back to the shelter. And I'm like, why would you do that? Because that's where I'm known. That's where they know me by name. And that's where I can get help and not feel like dirt. And I said, we got to do something different. And so I began working with a group who lived in an old motel. So it was really a single room that they had, but it was yeah. their place and they yeah. had a key. And we would meet once a week and we would have, call it Circle of Friends. Mm -hmm. And to this day, um, I'm amazed. A number of them have already gone home to God. Yes. But for those who, are, there are like six of them who are living that even though I've moved to Columbus and I've been here 10 years, yeah. 11 years now, they continue to call, they continue to touch oh, base, wow. and they'll just call and say, just check in to see if you're okay. So it's that sense of relationships that mm -hmm. we all know that is so important. And the sense of saying, um, I think God gave me that ministry because I, I it was more, you're, you're homeless because there are a lot of things happening at the same time. You're not homeless because you have one problem. Right. You're homeless because you have five problems. Yeah. So it was much more than I could ever deal with. Mm -hmm. So I had to let God deal with it. Um, but I also learned to just say, you know, some of the most important time is the time spent encouraging or just saying, I'm here, I'm walking with you. And so, um, and that has, that has probably been a very uh, life changing and formative time for me as well. So how about you, Kelly? What would you say? <laughs> um, I, I've been really blessed in the community to have like a couple of different um, experiences. And I, and I agree with you, Pat. Like, I think each one like is, it was such a gift for like at the time um, when I entered the community, my, I knew that the sisters of mercy, like many sisters have been involved in healthcare. And I actively was like, please no, dear God, I do not want to be involved in healthcare at all. And God is hysterical. And I, my first ministry in community was working in the ER um, and Mercy Hospital in St. Louis. And I had the absolute time of my life. I evidently thrive in chaos. <laughs> um, and it was, it was so funny because I didn't realize like how, how exciting the environment was, but there was like one sister who had, um, she was visiting someone. And so she like dipped into the, the ED just to say like, hello. And she goes, Kelly, like, how do you, how do you not go crazy with all the bells? I was like, what bells? I don't even hear them <laughs> because they're just, you just kind of get used <laughs> to the world that you're in. Um, so that, that experience was really profound for me. And then I had like the gift of working. Um, I always wanted to teach high school. And so I ended up teaching mostly middle schoolers, uh, but I had a couple of ninth grade classes as well um, in Mississippi. And that those kids got in my heart. And I, and I remember like on their like eighth grade retreat, which they were, they're an adventure and a half. And all of those kids, if any of you are watching, I love every single one of you and you know it. Um, but I just remember being on the retreat and just praying and my like, God, like, when were you going to tell me I was going to love these kids so much? Um, and it was super powerful. Um, and it's absolutely wild because they all know that I have social media. And so I promised all of them when they graduate from high school, if you still want to be friends with Sister <laughs> Kelly, you're welcome to send me a message and I will add you as my friend. Um, but I, I do stuff like silly things on the weekend. I, if you haven't seen, I pull stuff out of my hair. You're welcome to watch it. Um, and, and I like, but it's been great because I've been able to kind of connect with the kids that way. And every once in a while, I kind of do stuff to like, kind of be, just be like, you're still in my heart, you're still in my mind and all that. So that's been fun. Um, what is, oh, this is a toughy one if you don't already have one off the top of your head, but you have a prayer book in front of you so you could cheat. Um, <laughs> what is your favorite Catherine McCauley quote? Um, and for those of you who don't know, Catherine McCauley is the founders of the Sisters of Mercy, which is the community that we are all happily members of. Um, and do you have one off the top of your head? I know I have, I have mine that I love and it's one of like the rhymes that she wrote What's that? um and it's um okay now that I that was so confident <laughs> um it's um turn what you can into a jest and with few words dismiss the rest uh -huh. <laughs> which great. I think fits for That's me great. pretty well uh -huh. that is great the one that I always remember but I don't I don't know it by heart 
Um, so you all have to fill it in, but the it's the one about the fact of um, it's better to go ahead and give to uh, an imposter than it is to mm -hmm. to miss the one person that's really in need. Yeah, mm -hmm. you can. It's better. This is like serving like a ninety nine. Yeah, or hundred or something. Yeah, like that. yeah, and then the one. Yep. Yeah, I love that one. The one that I love is, um, and I can't quote it at this moment. It's allowed. It's, it's um, the one that that uses the phrase amidst this little tripping about. Mm -hmm. um, we can always be in the same place, even though we we are moving around pretty fast. Centered and, in God. Yeah. And centered in God, exactly. Yeah. Um, totally. Because God, of course, is, is wherever we are. Mm -hmm. Um, it's it's the phrase and it's this little tripping about it makes yeah. her so human. I, I mean, know. So yeah. Oh, I love I, her really writings are so fascinating because I mean, like what a world that they lived in. Um, and I think about it now, like it's been a, a big part of my reflection, like in this year of, you know, they were certainly living through their own epidemics and and wow. and, and figuring out how to serve and, and how to to be what you needed to be for people. Um, and I think that is, it's a powerful experience to have for sure. Um, and it, it's a good source of inspiration, I think, of, of you, it doesn't have to look the same, um, but it, do what you can with what you, with what you have mm -hmm. available. I now found during the pandemic, the challenge that always struck me was the fact that Catherine and, and, this, and the sisters went in the midst of the cholera to the hospital mm -hmm. and to be there for the poor. And we were encouraged and asked to please do the opposite, stay back for the common good. And, right. and that was a hard thing for me was to, to not go, to not be out there yeah. working with those who were on the streets or whatever um, in order to, to listen and to be part of the common good to say stay home and stay in the bubble yeah. yeah but you know even part of that i think about um to the same effect they were following like medical advice at the time they did everything you know like because they had a number of sisters who did get sick and and, and died that. um but they, you know, so they brought in a doctor and they said, how do we need to like change our diet and our routine so that we can be healthy? And I think that that, that awareness of like, follow the advice of medical experts and like to have it then in the midst of all that, I was like, oh good, we we are following in the Very same footsteps, but, but, and having to reach out a different way. When I entered the community, like that was one of the things that I, I've appreciated is, um, the presence that the community has online, because I always think that like, you know, the sisters were walk two by two and they were the walking nuns and all of that. But, um, the, the super highway is online now. And That's so right. how, right. how do we walk with people digitally, um, and, and encounter each other and bring love to all of it? Cause Lord knows we need a lot more love present online i think um especially because there's so many people who are reaching out for it um and are frustrated or whatever else is going on and if you can be a presence of love and joy and hope like that's the the gift for that um what drew you we have another question what drew you to the sisters of mercy in particular for me it was it was the charism it was what I knew of the Sisters of Mercy and their commitment to justice mm -hmm. and hospitality. For me, it was um, my my being drawn to Mercy happened early in my life when I was in grade school, and it was because of the sisters in Selma, Alabama, oh, uh -huh. um, who taught me at that time, and they planted a seed that just never it never. It never went dead. I mean, it just kept <laughs> growing. But the, um, I think at the time when I um, moved into Mercy, was a, it was a sense of saying it was that preferential option for the poor, mm. that that really the fourth vow of caring for the poor, the sick, and the ignorant, um, and wanting to be of service and bring God's light into darkness. Yeah. Um, so. Well, I I always say I was steeped in mercy. Um, I grew up with sisters who lived in the neighborhood, 
down the street from me. Um, they have better candy at Halloween, which is always a plus. Or at least I assume it was better because they were like, you go to this church. We know you. And here's this for you. So I assumed it was better. Um, and and then I went to a mercy school as well. And like we, the song, we would sing the sushi pay at every event possible. And I mean, did we sing it lovingly? No. As high schoolers, we sang it like a dirge, but with as much power and force as you had, you know, um, to the point where you just got obnoxious with it. But the thing was, is that every time you sang it, it got cemented deeper and deeper and within you. And I just remember when I was like beginning discernment, I was so um, restless with so much else going on. And I just was kind of filled with anxiety and the words of the sushi pay of like, take from my heart, all painful anxiety and suffer nothing to sadden me, but sin. It was like so freeing. And I was like, I think I have to go home to mercy. Um, and that was my encounter with that. Well, my are, dear, are we fortunate that that's our prayer? Isn't yes. it though? Yes. It's yes. to recognize it too. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yes. I've always, I love I, the sushi bear. I mean, I think you could spend the rest of your life pondering how profound and beautiful it is. Yes. Um, oh, I just love that. I love that <laughs> And the opportunity to say it and sing it, I'm always in. Mm -hmm. Well, my dears, shall we close our time with prayer? Well, All right. Sure. All let's, right. Let's go and to this our is what's prayer. super exciting about this sister talk is that we get to be together. And so we get to say our prayer um, together. So we brought our mercy prayer books um, to share with you our closing prayer from evening prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 O oh God, oh God, make us bold in asking for your gifts and, and grateful in accepting them. By our participation in the, in the saving mysteries of Christ's life, death, death and, and resurrection, resurrection, may our ordinary actions as well as our joys and sorrows, be transformed. We make this prayer through the one who is our advocate and friend. Amen. Thank you all so much. Have a great evening. Bye. <laughs> Good to be with you.